Hi everyone, it's May and welcome again to my channel Fanitation. So I'm back again with another review of a James Jurayu Lacan or drama and my pick today is Rock Suit Rit. Now it means love in the extreme and it is marketed under the English name Race. It was first broadcast in November 2013 after the success of Kunchai Putipat. It has 16 episodes in total and it stars James Jurayu and Punch Warakan. Now Rock Suit Rit is about a boy named Itirit or It who is brought up by a very strict father. He's a really spoilt, rich brat, and he grows up with the idea that his mother left the family because she had been bullied by her husband or its father, so it has a very poor relationship with his father. He also has a very bad relationship with uh, Tan, who is sort of his adoptive half-brother and who seems to achieve all the things that it can't achieve. Now, it almost flunks out of school because he's caught cheating. So to remedy the situation, his father hires a tutor for him and she happens to be the substitute teacher that failed it that led to him almost flunking out. Her name is Chanamon or Chon. Chon is the complete opposite of it. She comes from a very loving but very poor family. She puts her family first and she works very very hard to achieve her goals in life and that's why it annoys her so much because he has so many advantages in life which he throws away in her eyes. So they really get on each other's nerves at first, but the story is about how they end up together. It and Chon's family are also tied together with a sort of a mystery intrigue narrative that involves the police and some gangsters. And this is quite well written into the whole story. On my scale of 1 to 10 of James' dramas, 1 being the one I like best and 10 being the one I like least, Rux would rate ranks at number 6. So let's start with the bad things about this drama. So I feel that Channel 3 has really been unfair to Ruxwood Rit, and even though many of James' dramas and many Channel 3 dramas have been rerun and been reissued whether on YouTube or on Channel 3 Plus or online in a kind of a high definition version, Ruxwood Rit is still in 480p on YouTube. So this makes it very hard to watch because it's not even in a 169 format which most people are used to so it gives off a feel of being really old and outdated and I think for any new fans coming to this show this is probably quite unwatchable simply because the format makes it look bad. The second problem I have with the show, which is not very serious but could have made it a little bit better, is that the costumes are not so well done. At certain points, especially for the women's clothes, I felt it came off looking um, a little bit cheap production-wise. But now let's get on to what was good about this drama. It is really, really adorable. I have watched it many times in spite of the fact that, you know, the quality of the video is not very good. So this was James' second drama after Kunchai Putipat and he was riding on this wave of fame. James plays a college-going student which was really um, his age at the time. So the difference between Itirit and Kunchai Putipat is really like night and day. So James says it is so annoying at first. He is a real delinquent. Like when he runs Chon off the road with his big motorbike and his whole life is about rebelling against his dad. But it becomes pretty clear early on in the show that he's not really a bad boy at heart. It's just that his idea of why his mother left the family was such a seminal moment in his life and it shaped his worldview and actually gave him a very warped view of all the things happening around him. Once we get past the initial, you know, I challenge authority for the sake of challenging stage, he is actually teachable and he is definitely not um, an MCP, a male chauvinist pig, like Neng in Neng Nai Suang, which I had a lot of problems with and which you can see in the video that I did previously. I really liked its character. I thought that he made a very good progression in the show. So he is extremely self-centered and immature at the beginning of the show and this shows in all his interactions with his dad, with Chon, who is forced to tutor him because it brings her money that will help her to further her university studies. But it also shows in his relationship with his friends. But through his interactions with Chon and over time, he starts to understand that the world is not as 
simple as he sees it and maybe some of the flaws in his worldview. And this is a very believable arc that made me really love it at the end. And for those of you who haven't seen the show yet, there is a moment in episode 15 when it finally reunites with his mother. And James was so good in this part and it will really make your heart bleed to watch him. And just a little tidbit, his mother Narudi in this show is also played by Am Apasri who played his mother in Pai Kon Son Rak, which I also reviewed here. So while it is really irritating, he is also irritatingly handsome with his bad boy smirks and sneers. But um, if you are a James G fan like me, you will love all of it. But my favourite in the show was really towards the end of the show when he has grown up and matured. And I thought that James acting was so good here because it really showed on his face in the way he carried himself. You know, his body language really showed that he had grown up, which I thought was a very good job for a fairly new actor. Now, the Nang Ek or female lead was Punch Warakan. But Punch is actually very famous as a pop star. She had a very big career of her own before she acted with James in Rakshut Rit. And uh, a little tidbit here, Punch is nine years older than James. So that makes her the second oldest leading lady that James has had after Anne Tongprasom, who he acts with in Carrot Rug, which we are all waiting for right now. So Chon is actually two years older than it in the drama. Now Punch is not your normal leading lady and some people may even think she's a little bit plain because she doesn't really have that glamour girl look. It doesn't help that in the show, especially in the beginning part, they made her dress really dowdily, you know, with these very old-fashioned glasses and this bun on her head, a uh, buttoned-up shirt that was, you know, something that maybe little old ladies would wear and a dirndl skirt. So that really aged her a lot. As the show went on and she started to dress, you know, more appropriate for her age in the show, she started to look cuter and cuter. I really like Punch. I think she's very cute because she's not your stereotypical cookie cutter type of um, female lead. And I think she is very sweet in her own way and kind of pixie-like. I thought Punch was very natural in her acting, you know, whenever she portrayed a certain emotion, whether it was anger or happiness, it came across very natural and therefore was very relaxing to watch her. And I really loved the tone of her voice. And of course that's natural because she's a singer by profession. Her character is very easy to like and to empathize with because she has such good values, you know. She is really diligent and hardworking, but she has a great sense of humor. She loves her family so much and um, she's kind of like what you think a good person should be without being a goody two-shoes. She is a really great tutor and a mentor and a friend to both it and to Maya. So Chon is also a really great big sister to her very cute chubby brother Chin played by uh, Atai Klomke. The whole juxtaposition between uh, its very privileged and wealthy lifestyle and Chon's family and the very gritty poor way they live I thought was very well represented and my only wish is that her father Chu Chai's uh, fried rice store really existed because I really want to go and eat there. Now in every review Lakon that I do I always talk about the chemistry between the male and female lead because you know to be quite honest that's kind of what we're here for. James and Punch uh, chemistry I thought was very good for this show because this show is a comedy and even though there's romance it is not a very heavy romance it's still very light-hearted so I thought they played off each other very well when it was annoying her and when they fought or when they started to understand each other I thought it was all really well done and very believable and progressive so again no sudden jumps from you know I'm so annoyed with you to I'm deeply in love with you which is the kind of drama I don't like because it is too much of a mental leap um, they have some very funny scenes together like when Chon decks it and he totally deserves it or the other scene where um, James is kind of butt naked with his guitar. Of course it and Chon end up together but they don't ever kiss in the show. So they have a special gesture when they fall in love which is to 
rub noses. I am not terribly sure how I feel about this. Um, what I thought was really funny is that Punch has a rather flat profile like many of us who are Asian. So I guess it's a very fortunate thing that James has his very farang nose which is very high so that you know they could do this action without actually kissing. So I definitely like this pairing even though they never developed into one of James's you know Kujin giant ships sailing on the ocean. So James had his first um, fan meeting or concert in 2014 and it was called James G, Monkey King, and he had several um, guest stars on the show, including Punch, who sang with him. Now, my friend Ingfa, the one that I do my subtitling with, actually gave me a gift. So it's the James G, Monkey King box set that uh, was sold together with the concert. Now, I wasn't a James G fan at that time. I had no idea who he was, so I couldn't have bought it. Lucky for me, she had an extra that she gave to me a couple of years ago. Okay, so I'm going to try and lift this without dropping anything. So it's got two CDs of the concert. It's got a Monkey King t-shirt that I have never worn, obviously. And it's got a photo book. And I'll show you the picture of Punch because I think she looks absolutely cute. There you go. Okay, trying to get her in focus. There she is. So please go and watch the video of the concert because they are very cute together. I wanted to mention the second lead pair. Now they are made up of uh, Tan, who is its adoptive brother, played by Bim Kawi, and Maya, his schoolmate, who is also a celebrity, played by Wawa Nichari. I love Bim. I think he is so cute and he is so delectable as Tan. If I had to pick uh, one man from this show, I would pick him over it. Sorry, James. Bim has quite an interesting backstory. He was one of the members of probably the most famous Thai boy band uh, called D2B. The band broke up because one of their members, Big, unfortunately died when he was 25, which is very young. But the two surviving members, uh, Bim Kawi and Dan Warawek, still get together sometimes. And it is a testament to how big they were in their heyday and how many fans they still continue to attract because they've had a couple of reunion concerts after Big's death. And the last one was two years ago. And I believe that they sold out Impact Arena, which is really huge, in something like under 15 minutes. The other thing is that uh, Beam is a new father to twins T and P whom you can follow on Instagram. Now why am I telling you all this? Uh, it has nothing to do with Ruxedrit at all but you know maybe it will interest you to go and find out more about him so that he can have more fans because I, I like him. Now Wawa as Maya. I think the less said the better. I give Wawa kudos for trying very hard. I'm very glad to hear that Wawa has actually improved quite a lot and is doing a lot better in Lacons. but in this show, it didn't work out very well and therefore I couldn't get into her relationship with Tan. The last thing I wanted to talk about was the soundtrack for Raksud Rit. Now there's a very iconic song called Rak Te Kondyo Tao Nan which means to love only you. And the theme song was sung by a band called Yeser Days. But it is also sung by James in both Thai and in Japanese because Rakusutrit was also shown in Japan and that's where James got some of his Japanese fan base from. Now, this song really made James' fans uh, sit up because it was the first time he had sung a soundtrack and they realized that, you know, this boy can really sing. So I'll link the music video up here so you can go and take a look at it. So he's very cute in this video, you know, with his beanie and again, his fat cheeks that I really love and wearing his big goofy glasses with the thick lenses because he was quite myopic at the time. This was before he got LASIK surgery, which he has mentioned several times before. So that's it for today's review. I hope that makes you want to watch Raksud Rit. If you search around, you should be able to find a version with English subtitles. Thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and stay safe everyone. Bye!